G'day guys, and today we've got some big news concerning uh, political corruption in my state of New South Wales. So just within the last week, the Independent Commission Against Corruption, or ICAC, has alleged that the New South Wales branch of the Australian Labor Party may have received and then attempted to cover up illegal donations back in 2015. Now the scope of their investigation is actually wider than this, but this is the central premise or the central focusing point and the one that is guarding the most attention, so that's the one I'm going to be reporting on. So to set the scene, back in 2015 there was a fundraising dinner for the Chinese Friends of Labour. Uh, that's a group of obviously Chinese people who are sympathetic towards the Labour Party. And uh, several uh, people were in attendance, uh, notably billionaire property developer Huang Zingmo. I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation. We don't know much about this investigation, but you can be damn sure that I'm butchering that pronunciation. So we had Mr. Huang at this um, at this uh, event, and a few weeks after this event, uh, Mr. Huang dropped a hundred thousand dollars in cash to Labor's head office. Now, in New South Wales, this is a bit of cause for pause, as property developers are not allowed to make donations. So, if you have a billionaire property developer dropping you off a hundred thousand dollars, well, that looks a bit suspicious. So, reading from the Daily Mail, we can see that. Labor has disclosed they received a total close to $139,000 in revenue from this dinner. So the $100,000 in cash is being recorded as received from 12 different donors, most of who gave $5,000 to New South Wales Labor and another $5,000 to country Labor, which is just under the donation uh, cap limit at the time. So most of these disclosed donors, because uh, rule for the New South Wales Labor Party is that you have to, um, there needs to be a paper trail of where the money came from, obviously to avoid Corruption um, might not have worked in this instance, as we'll see. Um, so we'll, uh, they were mostly associated with a Chinese friend of Labour convener, Jonathan Yi, who's the general manager of the Emperor's Garden Restaurants in Chinatown. So five of these donors were employees or former employees of the Emperor's Garden, uh, family members and associated things like that. Now this has been a bit of a, a topic of suspect for ICAC. Uh, what is being accused is that these donors were in fact straw donors or fake donors used to cover up the amount that was donated by, uh, it is suspected, Mr. Huang, which is, to be clear, an illegal donation. So the ICAC investigation has stated that it is implausible that restaurant workers would have the financial capacity to make lump sum donations of $5,000 or $10,000 as well as other factors, this has led the Electoral Commission to suspect that the $100,000 in cash was donated on behalf of a person or persons other than those who appeared in the New South Wales Labour and Country Disclosures. So that's what's being alleged here. We have $100,000 being donated in cash, where it is being alleged that this is an illegal donation and that fake donors are being used to cover up this amount. So someone at the centre of this investigation is former Labour Party MP Ernest Wong. It is being alleged that Wong helped procure false donation records following the 2015 dinner. Wong is already up shit creek because it has been revealed, um, or suggested that he may have been giving false evidence to ICAC. Um, essentially what occurred is, uh, back in 2015, Wong was responsible for selling seats on a particular table that Mr Huang was at. It was the VIP table, you could sit next to Bill Shorten and that sort of thing. And what occurred is that um, Wong was asked, have you ever told anyone that you were selling seats at this table for $100,000? And he said no. And essentially what was then shown was an email from Wong to a man named Joseph Law. And when uh, Law asked, you know, how much is this table with Bill Shorten and Chris Bowen? Uh, Wong had replied, sorry, that table has already been taken for $100,000. So straight away, he's been giving false evidence, but he claims he uh, simply did not remember making that email, so he at least has some plausible deniability since this was four years ago. But if he's willing to lie about one thing, then surely he's willing to lie about another. So, you know, he may be just covering his ass and uh, lying through his teeth. Now, if that doesn't quite do it for you, let me illuminate you to the fact that Wong's story has been contradicted by the now former... General Secretary of New South Wales Labour, Carly Munane, another name I'm surely butchering, she claims that Wong knew the money had come from Mr. Huang, and when he expressed this to her, was very anxious about the fact that um, he had used fake donors, essentially. Now, Carly herself has recently fallen on hard times, being evicted from a position of General Secretary of New South Wales Labour by the state's um, party leader, and this is because she admitted 
that she'd known about this potentially illegal donation since at least 2016 and had been advised to shut up about it by the party's lawyer. Obviously, this is very poor form for any kind of uh, leader within any kind of movement, but especially politics when we're dealing with corruption as this. And uh, yeah, absolutely. I think she should have been kicked out. She should have come to light straight away. Um, you know, you can't claim to be interested in what's best for the nation if you're just going to administer what you think is good in a partisan manner, not reporting the crimes of your team and that sort of thing. So, yeah, don't feel sorry for her whatsoever. She should have um, come out and said something. So it should come to the surprise of no one that the Liberal Party of New South Wales is using this as an opportunity to attack their political opponents, with the Premier Gladys Berejiklian coming out and having some harsh words to say about Labour's practices. Um, she's probably very keen to get the spotlight off her, considering her um, botched treatment of abortion within New South Wales. And before you know, anyone jumps down in the comments saying, "Oh, you know, the Labour Party is left wing and bad." But the Liberal Party in Australia, or New South Wales, they're right wing, so they're good. Well, I'd like to point out that, you know, five years ago, under a similar investigation called Operation Spicer, it was essentially revealed that the New South Wales Liberal Party was using a slush fund to essentially hide donations from property developers. So they're two sides of the same coin. You know, they're both establishment political groups trying to keep their head in the trough by any means necessary, and they're only sorry when they get caught, as we've seen from... Um, the uh, big resignation from a man called Sam Destiero from the Labour Party, who was, again, essentially getting um, uh, foreign investors to pay for his hotel visits and that sort of thing. So if anyone attempts to dice this down into a partisan issue, you can tell them that they're a fucking clown because it's a bipartisan issue. These are both establishment political groups seeking to maintain their grip on power. And what do we know about power? Well, power is very addictive, as addictive as cocaine. Now, what will cocaine junkies do to get their fix? Well, they will lie, they will steal, they will assault, they will do all sorts of horrible things in order to get their fix. And the same is with politics. People do all sorts of things to maintain their grip on political power, especially in highly centralized nations like Australia, where the government has almost complete control over education, healthcare, the economy. There's a lot of power up for grabs here to reward your friends uh, and to punish your enemies. And also to feather the nest when into you when you eventually retire on the public dime and that sort of thing. Not that I'm at all bitter about any of that at all. Whilst we don't yet know for sure if something illegal has been undertaken, it certainly looks very suspicious with all this money being shuffled around and false donation records and people contradicting one another and this sort of thing. It does look like a big mess. Um, I, I would doubt the fact that uh, people would make illegal donations to keep their head in the trough. It wouldn't surprise me at all. And it is these compulsive liars, these power addicts that have almost complete control over everything in my life, the lives of my friends and the lives of my family. It does not fill me with great hope for Australia's competency, even in the short run, if we have people like this uh, at least attempting to run the show or in some cases succeeding and running the show despite the fact that they lie through their teeth all the time or at the very least be fraudulent. Yeah, it's, it's not a good feeling and it just, you know, it's more evidence to the big bag of evidence that I have that uh, massive government control, massive government oversight, expansive government is not a good thing for society. We should be looking to restrain government as much as humanly possible. There will always be vice and corruption within the human race and it is unfortunately people who revel and seek vice and corruption that also seek uh, political office and political power. What we should be doing in limiting government power is also limiting the damage that these people can do to the rest of society. Because if we have corrupt people running the show and there's a massively expansive government, well then they can fuck a lot of people up. But if government is highly restrained, then they can't abuse people as much as possible. This is why I support any action that reduces the size and power of the state in Australia as well as around the world. Um, I'm not, you know, some Australian-centric person. I care about people around the world. I don't think anyone should have to live under the tyranny of you know, the monopoly of force and that sort of thing. People should be free to make their own mistakes and engage in their own vice and corruption rather than being enthralled in servitude to the vice and corruption of those who rule over us. Thanks all for sticking around and have a good one.